Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me this morning, if you would, to 2 Kings chapter 8. Praise God. 2 Kings chapter 8. We'll re be reading out of the New King James Version. If I can find it. Amen. Just stand to your feet when you get 2 Kings chapter 8. Verse number 1. 2 Kings chapter 8. Verse number 1. Amen. How many is ready to see what God is about to do in your lives? <clears throat> hey, before I, I, I do, while you're standing, I got your complete attention. Uh, 4th of July, we will be celebrating 4th of July. And we're going to do this at Titus and Dina Weller's house. They don't even know what they're getting into. But we're going to pray for them afterwards. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to celebrate 4th of July because... Uh, for one thing, they got Olympic-sized swimming pool. They got three of them. No. <laughs> they got a swimming pool, and we don't want to be hot this year doing that. So we're going to pop fireworks and jump in the swimming pool and have a, a fantastic time. So you are invited, and uh, I'm not going to say his address uh, here, but uh, he can give it to you later and, and, uh, and give you all that. And please don't tell your friends and your neighbors that they can swim free because, no. <laughs> Amen. But he has opened up and uh, wanted to do that. I need to say this real quick uh, because of listening to, uh, to prophecy going about America. And uh, America is not falling. It's, it, it's, not, it's not never going to make it. But there is something very powerful going to happen on 4th of July. I need, I need to tell all of you there. And, 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 and I, I, I've been telling people that they're liable to censor me here in the next uh, few weeks, but that's okay. We've done, we done fixed that problem. We got apps. We got going live on the web page and all that. But I need to tell you something. There's a revival that's shaking America right now. You're not seeing it in mainstream media, and you're not seeing it on TBN. I'll call it like it is. A lot of the TBNs are sold out to what? Anyway. So this is coming from the dirt road churches. It's coming from the men and women of God who hear it, who breathe it, who see it, who dream it, that the Holy Ghost began to move upon them. Amen. And we are going to see a revival. It's going to shake. And it's going to happen fast. It's going to happen quick. And it's going to happen powerful. And you're not going to find it on the newscast. You're not going to find it on, on, on all of these, those things going on. You're going to find it in your small towns, in your corporate churches, in your, in, in, in your small community churches. Uh, and you're going to find it. You're going to plug into it. And there's something about to happen. You mark my men. You mark my words. We're going to become men. We're going to stand up. And we're going to take our churches back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take it back. Last year, on this day right here, was the first day that we walked into this building after being shut down for 11 weeks. For 11 weeks. We did a couple, two or three weeks out here on the trailer. But on Father's Day, we made that decision uh, to open up. And so when we come in here on Father's Day, I think we got more this year than we did last year. It blowed my mind. It blowed my mind. Amen. But you men, this is some things that's going to happen in this place, okay? In this place right here, okay, you look for it in this place right here. God is shaking some things. He's moving some things. There's going to be some desires that you've been pulled to all your life, and you don't know how to get away from them, and God is pulling them, and it's not going to be because there's a 12-step program. It's not going to be because there's a counseling session. It's going to be because of the anointing that is set upon this house right here, upon this house right here. It's going to draw you, it's going to move you, it's going to provoke you, and it's going to cause great things to be happening. Amen? Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 8. Are y'all there? Verse number 1. Now Elisha had said to the, to the woman whose son had restored to life. Let me, let me read that again. I butchered that. I don't have my glasses. Now Elisha spoke to the woman whose son 
he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go you and your household and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines for seven years. And it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to return. And it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. And she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, tell me, please, all the great things that happened at Life Changers Church. Hmm. Then Elisha has done. Now it happened, listen to this, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was the woman, imagine that, whose son he had restored to life appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son. Look at your neighbor and say, and say it's fixing to happen. <laughs> and this is her son in whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king answered the woman, she told him. So the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Listen, Listen, my God, I feel, when I, when I read this, I felt it. Restore all that was hers and all the proceeds, give her interest, of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare on Father's Day 2021, Lord, there's a, there's a breaking that is happening. God, there is a moving and there is a shaking. And today I believe, God, that you're going to move these men to the front lines and take their appointed place. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. You may be seated. Listen, I know there's a lot of plans for you men today, and I want you to enjoy those. Give me about 30 minutes, if you would. Give me about 30 minutes, and, uh, and, and, and we're going to see what God's got to say. Amen? As we had the men's conference this week, first of all, uh, it was an amazing thing. I know some of you guys, uh, uh, jobs took you away. You weren't able to, to, to get here a part of that or whatever, but we're going to have that on video. We're going to get that up, and y'all's going to be able to, uh, to go back and hear some of the words uh, that was said in this place is very, very, very powerful. So as we go back and do that, uh, pay attention to that. We'll put that on the Man Thing Facebook page. Amen. But as I begin to study uh, for the uh, for the uh, message this morning, I, I I was going back and God had reminded me of the story that uh, that that I'd come across several months ago. And uh, matter of fact, one of my Bibles uh, that, that I had, I put a little sticky note. And I put Father's Day 2021, and, I, and I'd completely forgot about it. How many gets busy and just forget about it? So when I was going through it, I flipped over, and I seen it. I thought, Father's Day 2021? I didn't even realize. I, I'd forgotten that I'd wrote that. So when, when I went down and I read this, I thought, okay. So I began to pray about it, and, and, and I was changing directions because there was something that I thought I could preach better. Any preachers in here uh, this morning, you'll understand there's some messages you can preach real good. And there's some message God just says preach, amen. And so, as as as, as I, there was something I wanted to, to to inspire, but God would not let this out of my uh, heart. So this morning, uh, the Bible says that there was a a widow woman, and in, in this story, if you go back to Second Kings chapter four, you read about the Shumanite woman. This is her, and the Shumanite woman. The Bible said that the man of God, the prophet, would come by her house. And she, the Bible said she perceived he was a man of God. So she decided to make him a little uh, bed and a little chamber, a little candlestick, and a little table and a chair. And all of those have significance, and I, I don't have time to go into the table and the candlestick and the chair and the bed. But, but, but I'll break that down later on. But they're very significant in what God is about to do in the kingdom of God. And so the Bible said that he stayed there, and when he did, he thought, you know what? I need to do something for this lady. 
And so, so he asked his servant Gehazi. He said, what is it that I can do for her? And so, and so Gehazi asked the woman, what is it I can do? At this point, the woman had everything that she needed. Matter of fact, she was a wealthy woman. When you go back into it, she was very wealthy. There was nothing she was lacking from. She wasn't lacking for anything. Matter of fact, she had everything she ever wanted. And she said, there's nothing that I need. And, and down deep, God began to speak to Elisha, and Elisha said, but there's got to be something. Gehazi asked her. Gehazi said, well, I know this about her. He said, what is it? He said, she doesn't have a child. Not only does she have, doesn't have a child, but her husband is old. And so Elisha says, okay, the Spirit of God begins to move, and he prophesies, and he tells the woman, he said, by this time next year, by the cycle time of a child, you will have a child. Well, she, listen to me, man, listen. She didn't believe what God said. Hang on just for a minute. Some of you have been taught to come to church. Well, I'll tell you what, if God said it, you don't believe it, then it's not going to happen. Let me just back up just a minute. You ain't that powerful. God says stuff to go past you sometimes. This woman did not agree with what was being said. Matter of fact, she said, man of God, don't you lie to me. Don't you come in here and tell me I'm going to have a child. My husband's old. He's old as Mike Burks. He's way up there. <laughs> Ain't nothing left in the bank. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I just got to talk to the men for a minute. <laughs> Some of the women's going, oh, my God. My wife's one of them. Oh, dear God. <clears throat> so she did not believe, but here's the thing. This is what's happening. Y'all listen to me. Listen to me very quickly. I'm oh, quickly. <laughs> Y'all want me to be quickly. Very, very good. God is coming back to the day to the prophets. Come on. They're going to prophesy things and it's going to go over your head and past your head and God is not going to need you to step into something to see what he's going to do. He already knows what America is going to become. He already knows what America is. He's already done the things for America. Men, I'm telling you right now, he's went past all your drug days. He's went past those times when you've laid out and jacked up and crazy. He's went all past all those times. He's not needing you to get it right to do something. He's speaking something into your life that's going to happen. Yeah. We're sitting back and we're trying to make everything, well, you know, God said this, so, so boy, I, I need to do this, uh, and I need to do that, and as soon as he messes up, the devil jumps up and says, well, well, you believe that? God ain't going to do it now. He is a lie. Yeah. He's a lie. Amen. Amen. When God speaks something, if he's bold enough to stand up and speak it, it's going to happen. Elisha prophesied. She didn't believe a word that he said. <laughs> and guess what? She got pregnant. Woo. Got pregnant with a man child. And the Bible says, then it skips a little bit and says, and after the child was grown, one day he was out in the field. While he was working, he grabbed his head and said, oh, my head, my head. And the Bible said, that he brought the, that, that, that the husband brought the child back to the mama. Listen to me. He brought the child back to the mama because he knew that the mama had a place and a position uh, that God gave her. He brought the child back to the mama. And listen, 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 listen. The child didn't die in the field. He died in the mama's arms. She's holding that boy. He's grown now. He's holding that boy. The Bible says that she gets up and she tells her husband, get me the fastest Corvette you got. <laughs> I'm going to find the man of God. He was dead laying on the ground. Some of you men know what I'm talking about. Mamas didn't give up on you. Yes. Grandmamas didn't give up on you. Yes. Amen. The church is a she. The church didn't give up on you. Yes. She went to the man of God. 
And while she was going to the man of God, the Bible said that he looked up. The horses were going so fast that dust was going up. Then Elisha knew that somebody was coming. And he looked and he said, Gehazi, would you go out and find out and see who that is coming and see if all is well. And so, and so he went out uh, to the woman and he asked her, he said, he said ma'am, is, is, is all well? She said, everything's all right with me. <laughs> now listen, how many of us could sit and watch something that God had give us some of us men, we've had dreams. We've had dream jobs that we know that God has given us. We've had things in our life that we know that we know that God has put into our life, and it died. And 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 even though God said He was going to do it, it died in our arms, and we got frustrated, and we walked away. I'm telling somebody right now: Don't you give up? Don't give up. I don't care if it did die. If God spoke it into existence, it's got to live. We got to stand up and say, you got to live in Jesus' name. She went all the way to the man of God. and She looked at the servant. She said, all is well. She didn't let anything know. She went about to, that, to let nobody tell the man of God what was going on. She was coming. She was coming. Long story. Short, she gets there, she falls down at the man of God's feet, and she tells him, she says, the child that you said that you was going to give me has died. Now you come back and bring him back to life. Woo! Woo! How many times have we ever come into church and just, just had a pity party? Lord, you said you was going to do it, and I don't know what I'm going to do. That's where men, when we stand up and we come in and we say, God, you give me this family. You give me this child. You give me this wife. Come on, somebody. You give me this job. And now you get it back. We have to stand firm in that. I don't know what happened to this generation where we was taught, uh, well, praise God, if, 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 if the preacher lays his hands on you and you fall out, then you got it. Oh, that's the that's a craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. You can get it in your car on the way to work. Uh, you can get it while you're cooking breakfast. Come on, somebody. You got to get it back. Uh, you got to stand up and proclaim it. Uh, you got to know what God's saying. You got to get your stuff back. Look at your neighbor and say, get your stuff back. So now, the Bible said he raises the boy. And then he looks at the woman. He says, listen. He said, God has spoken to me. This is where I'm coming, men, right now. We have to listen. Listen to your pastors. Listen to your teachers. Listen to the men of God that God has put in your life. Because there, there is coming weeks of things that is going to happen that's been prophesied six months ago, nine months ago. I'll even go all the way back to 2016 with Kim Clements that's been prophesied over America. And things are going to happen. Listen and pay attention to what God is doing. We have to listen to pay attention to what God is saying in our lives. He told the woman, he said, get up because there's going to be a famine. And it's going to be for seven years. So she got up and she left for seven years. God was protecting her. And while God was protecting her, the enemy was trying to steal everything that she had. Somebody hear me in here this morning. Some of you has walked in and you've given your life to God uh, and, 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 and a great things has happened. Not just men, but I need to talk to some of you ladies in here. And you've given God everything that you had. Uh, and, uh, and all of a sudden, it looks like that everything is falling apart. Uh, everything is gone. Uh, and you don't have everything that you know that you should have. Uh, and the devil is lying to you. Uh, and he's telling you you'll never get it back. Uh, he's telling you that you ain't the, the, the person uh, that you used to be. Uh, he's telling you that you ain't good enough. Uh, he's telling you you don't pray long enough. He's telling you that you've missed too much church. Uh oh, praise God. He's telling you all of these things and before you know it, we get to that place to where we think that the only time we can get a hold of God is when we get somebody who's closer to God than us. Can, can, can I say something? Get closer. Can I say something? Rebuke the devil and get your stuff back. Get back in line where God wants you to be and start asking God for things. <laughs> So now we get to the story of 2 Kings chapter 8. Now the famine is over with, and the woman comes out of the Philistines' land, and she comes back to get her estate back. And when she gets there, everything's taken up, and the king has given it to somebody else. So she's going to make it to the place to where the king. And when she gets and on her way to the king, 
Gehazi must be in the same place because he's standing before the king. And the king realizes this is the man, listen to me, men, what's going to happen in your life, you're, you're, you're about to be promoted. Listen, all you men in here, just accept this right now. You're about to be promoted. God is going to promote you, and he's not going to promote you because you know something or because you got a college education or, or because your daddy uh, uh, this or your grandpa this. He's going to promote you because they know that you've been with God. Men, listen to me. There's a promotion coming because people are going to hear that you've been with God. Second Kings chapter 8, the king's standing out there, and here comes Gehazi. Gehazi shows up, and so the king says, Hey, are you the one that was with the man Elisha? Gehazi says, Yeah. He says, Can you tell me some of the miracles that begin to happen? So Gehazi began to tell about the little uh, boy, the, the Shumanite woman, and about her son that died and was rose. And the Bible said that while he was speaking, that lo and behold, she shows up. Whew. She walks into that place. And Gehazi says, King, matter of fact, here she is right now. And so the king says, will you tell me the story? And she goes back into the story, and I don't think that she left anything out, but I believe that she went back into the story. I believe that she began to, listen to me, you got to understand, this was a wealthy woman. This was not just a woman with a shack on the other side who needed a piece of property. When Elisha showed up, she had everything. She had a farm. She had a Corvette. She had a Harley Davidson and a Kawasaki. Come on, somebody. She had, she had all of these things. She had everything in her garage, everything you could ever mind she had a bass boat she had a sea dude praise God she had a shop with, 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 with 15 welders and 40 men in it she had all of these things she was a wealthy woman she had a lot to lose and so she showed up and she could have very well sat back and thought well you know what God saved my life because in the famine I left but she showed up with a fight in her can I say men we gotta have a fight in us we don't just go to church anymore because our wife wanted us too. We don't go to church anymore just to get a wife off of us. We don't go to church anymore just because our buddies are there. But we go to fight. We go to get back everything that the, uh, that the devil ever stole in our lives. We go to get it back. This woman wasn't fighting over pennies. She's a billionaire in her days. She's lost everything because of a famine, pandemic. Everything's shutting down. There's a famine. Have you not noticed that America is going through the same thing? Yeah. I tell my boys all the time, the only trucking company that even does anything is RTL. <laughs> <coughs> We've ordered stuff to come in on the truck. My wife, she's so mad the other day, she chewed a 16-penny nail, plumbing tube, just... <laughs> Billy knows. No. <laughs> can't get nothing delivered. Can't get nothing to come. I mean, the whole world, there's a shortage. Listen to me. I need to tell some. Listen to me. Put that camera right here. Listen to me. Listen to me. The devil is lying. Do not believe what you are seeing. He is lying. Do not believe. I need to say that again. Do not believe what you are seeing. The church need to stand back up. If Facebook don't like what I'm saying, let them take my name off the board. But I'll preach the word, and I'll tell you right now, America is not falling apart. It's not going down because there is a few people, a remnant, that will stand back up after a famine and say, this is what my God did in my life. Hallelujah. When she 
could have stayed quiet, when she could have paid somebody off, when she could have saved some money, she shows up to the king to make an appeal. And while she gets there, the same man that she told him all is well is standing there telling a story. He says, matter of fact, she showed up. Man, I'm going to tell you something right now. There's going to come a time where you're going to have to stand up and you're going to have to tell them, look, this is what God did for me. This is how God did it in my life. This is what God showed up. And so the king looked over and when the woman told the story, she told the story, the man of God, Elisha, told me I was going to have a child. My husband was old. He couldn't have kids or children. Well, he couldn't anyway. He couldn't produce. Like I said, the bank was gone, praise God. And so and so all of a sudden, God put money. He made a deposit. Woo! Glory to God. He made a deposit. And so I had my boy, and my boy was great. Everything was good. He grew up. He was a grown man. One day he died. I decided I'm going back to the man of God. I need to tell some of you men right here this morning that you made a good decision to show up back to house the house of God because God is doing things in your life. He told you he would do 10 years ago, five years ago, seven years ago. He's doing it and he's putting in your life. While he's telling the story, she tells her story. And the king says, you know what? She said, we're going to give back this woman. Listen, her land. Listen, because I don't know. But he says, and anything that the land has made while she's been gone for seven years. Listen, God said, I'm not only going to give you, listen, you listen to me right now. I feel the anointing. Not only is he going to give you back what was there, but everything that the devil lied on you, uh, everything that happened up to this point, uh, God said he's going to give you back every penny that he stole, uh, every lie that he ever told. Uh, he, you, you hear me. Uh, he's going to give it back. Uh, he's going to restore you, uh, and he's going to restore some things in your life. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, he said, not only do you just give it back, uh, because you'll be satisfied uh, just to have the debt gone, uh, but God said, I'm a bigger God than that. Uh, I'm going to take back what the enemy stole uh, out of that debt and I'm going to put it back he said I want you not only to give her the land but I want you to give her every penny that the land ever made for the seven years that you took it from her ah! men I'm here to tell you God is restoring your life and he's bringing back some of you are just glad that you're in church that you ain't running with your dope buddies but in those times I need to tell some of you men while you was raised up in church and your mama put her arms around you and you gave your life to Christ while you were 7 years old or 8 years old or 12 years old from that moment God you become a product of God and when you got saved you're just settling for I don't have to live like that but God is telling hell you got to give them back everything you stole in the nightclub everything you stole in the alley everything you stole while they was chasing the dope while they was shooting it in the arms while they was lying while they was conniving you give, you give them back So men don't just come in here just thanking God when well, you showed up. Listen to me. I'm telling you something. God is restoring. Yes. Amen. He's giving you back everything that the enemy took from you. And he's going back and he's counting every day and he's counting every hour from the moment he stole it. Amen. He said, don't you just restore her, her land back. But you give her every penny that was ever made while she was gone. Listen, for seven years. <coughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Anna, come piano, please. Listen. They say that you have to legally be gone 
for seven years while you're missing to be given a death certificate. They said it takes legally seven years after you've been reported missing before you can get a death certificate. <laughs> One of these days, they're going to be looking for Roger Brown. Now I'm going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb of God. Amen. For three and a half years, it's going to be good. For three and a half years, it's going to be very bad. But I'm going to be eating donuts. <laughs> Come on. Chocolate milk and eating chicken eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell that story another time. I got to stay on it. <laughs> I'm going to be having, I'm, breakfast is my favorite. I mean, seriously, you, you steak is good, but keep your steak. Give me some sausage. Woo, sausage, that's Oklahoma stuff. Sausage. Give me some, give me some gravy. I don't want to hash browns. Give me some home fries. Big old strips of bacon. I mean, make them crispy that when you put it in your mouth, they just fall off. <laughs> oh, that's country living right there. Getting up in time to eat breakfast and getting that. Listen, and for seven years, they're going to they're gonna say, well, he's gone all of a sudden. Boom. I'm going to show up on a horse. Listen, not no Shetland. <laughs> I believe when I get there, I believe when I get, when I get there, God's going to stand my leg. <laughs> he said he'd give you the desires of your heart. Lord, I just want to be six foot. He Lord will put me on the biggest horse there and my leg's just dragging. <laughs> but listen, I'm going to come back. Don't count me out. All those that you have lost, ever loved one, men and women, you hear me. Get ready. They're about to mount up on the same horse you're going to mount up on. They're coming back. Come on, somebody. I know you're grieving because they're gone now, but you just get ready. God, ah, God's about to have a homecoming, and you're going to show up, and your families are going to be together. Men, we are going to see the greatest war ever, and we're not even going to have to do nothing. But show up. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to be leading this battle. And when he shows up, the devil's going to fall down and shake and give up just at the sound of his voice. And all we're going to do is show up. But men all over this place, I know we're celebrating Dad's Day, but I'm talking about men all over this place. You stood on this, on this stage. The camera seen you. A lot of countries. We have 148 countries, nations watching. They seen you. They seen you. So I, I cut this short because this is what I need to do. On the count of three, every man that you believe that you're going to get everything back everything he stole not just because you started church and God wiped the debt but everything that he stole in the process God's giving it back to you every man who wants it back every man who's sick and tired of just barely getting by and barely making it come on every man who's sick and tired of just coming to church and, 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 and not knowing your identity or where you're at every man in this building I don't have time to lay my hands on every one of you because there's a lot of you here this morning, but we're going to do a corporate prayer. Some of you I may lay my hands on whatever God says. But on the count of three, I want you to make, make right here. If you've got to make a horseshoe, two or three back, I don't care. Come right here and let's get back. One, two, three. Come on. Hallelujah.
Give me just a minute, but before I do, I want you to take your hands as high as you can and raise them to heaven, both of them. Right here, I need y'all. Right here. Every man in this place. I need y'all right here. There's a spot right over here. Right here in the front. If you want to come right over here. Come on, Russ. Hallelujah. You too, right over here. Right down there. Hey, raise your hands right here. Raise them. Hi. Come on, you want this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I come to you right now. Keep your hands high. I'm not going to hold you long here. Father, I come to you right now. And these men are standing up and they're holding up their hands. It's a sign of surrender. I'm surrendering my life to you right now. Now, Lord, I don't know what all they've been through. Some of them has been through prison. Some of them has been through divorce. Some of them has been through losing children. Losing mamas, losing daddies, losing brothers, losing sisters. But, Lord, as they stand up here right now, they surrender their self to you and I declare right now, June, Father's Day, 2021. June 20th, 2021, right now. That from this moment on, did everything that the enemy has stolen in the process of their life when they was confused, uh, when they was hurt, uh, when they didn't understand, uh, when they lost the things, when they was grumbling, when they was griping, when they was complaining, uh, when they was discouraged, uh, when they was mad, uh, when they were saying the church ain't never done nothing for me, uh, God, you know, just does things every now and then. My life ain't good enough to live for him. All of those things that they're calling out right now, Lord, and the enemy just come in one by one. Uh, he didn't steal everything, but he took it brick by brick. Uh, and they woke up one day, uh, and they're just glad to be saved. But God said, we're going to go back and we're going to restore under their lives everything that the enemy took. So right now, in the name of Jesus, send forth the angels, Lord, and bring it back to their lives right now. Bring it back to their lives. Bring it back to their lives right now. Now you man with your hands up, just reach and touch your neighbor's shoulder. Just touch her shoulder just for a minute. Just make a connection right there. Father, in the name of Jesus. God is there touching one another, Lord. I declare right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus. I anoint them right now, Heavenly Father, to do the things. Shout out. I'm going to take everything that he sold him. Ever since the famine come into your life, God said now that there's plenty, he said, I'm going to go back and give you everything in the name of Jesus. Father, now, we anoint him right now, Father. We anoint him right now, Father. Lord, let him do amazing things and great things and exploits. Father, Lord, let him do the things that you called him to do. While you're touching your neighbor, just touch your neighbor right there. Let that anointing just flow, flow from the front to the back. Let it flow upon your life. Father, do what you said you was going to do. Do what you said you was going to do. Lord, restore everything. Some of you walked in here this morning. You ain't felt loved. Your mama's left you or, or your daddy's left you. You strung out from home to home, from place to place. Now your family wants a relationship with you and you want to try to do the right thing because you think that's what I need to do. But God said there's a piece of you and there's a missing you. 
There's a hole in you that's been gone for a long time and the enemy's using that and you're not getting close to God like you need to be because that hole's still there. Not only is he going to give back, but he's going to heal. Right now, he's going to heal. He is going to heal. Hallelujah. He's going to heal. And not only is he going to heal, but you're going to learn how to be a man. You're going to do the things that God told you to do. You're going to see it come to pass. You're going to see it come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just look at the man sitting next to you on either side of you. Just look at him right in the eyeball. Just look at him. Take a good look. This is your army right here. Take a good look. This is your men right here. <laughs> Listen, I'm just one, but God's given me all of you. There's only so much I can do. There's only so many houses I can reach, only so many phone calls I can make. But you can stand up and be a part of this army, and you can make phone calls and send messages and go to hospitals. Come on, men. This is your army. This is where it starts. Hallelujah. Get three men a high five on your way back to your seat. My God, I ain't seen nothing that funny in a long time. <laughs> Woo! Father's Day, it's 11.40, you gonna beat the Baptist to the buffet? Done got your groove on? Come on, somebody. Woo, got filled up, got encountered, had an encounter. Listen, do not lose. Take this word, if you gotta go back and see it over and over, men, take this word, listen to me. Do not lose what God did right here this morning. Amen. He restored it to you this morning. You're getting it back. Hallelujah. You don't forget Thursday night right here at 7 o'clock. Tell somebody about it. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the men in this place. Hallelujah. Excuse me. I'm out of place. Here, Sister Lynn. <laughs> that was fine. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, years ago, for many, many years, I would go to church, and the only man there would be the pastor. This is exciting, guys. This is very, very exciting. Because when, when the men stand up and take their place in God, order, order is going to come and be restored. Hallelujah. We're headed for order in America. Amen. Father God, thank you for what you've done in these men in this, this week, Father God, and in this service this morning. Thank you, Father God, that they're going to go from this place in a strength and a confidence, God, that they didn't have when they walked in here. And God, I thank you. I thank you because you are a God who never forgets. God, when we fall, when a piece of us falls off, you pick it up and you put it back. You put us back together in Jesus' name. Amen.